Apollo. You might know him as the god of light or the sun, one of the most important gods in Greek mythology. But damn, you don't know the half of it. Apollo killed three of his female lovers, yeah? Apollo killed his male lover by accident. Apollo lost two of his sons. He defied the supreme god Zeus and lived to tell the tale and listen. My man Apollo flayed another man alive. That means he peeled another man's skin off while that man was alive. Do you get me? And Apollo also murdered a pregnant woman. Yeah, this baby-faced beautiful god, Apollo, was a problem. And don't give me the excuse of, oh, Hera tried to kill him when he was a baby, bro. Half of Greek mythology was almost killed as a baby. The fact is that the god of light, Apollo, had such a dark side that even his dark side was like, damn, bro, you dark as hell, though. <laughs> we'll explore this dark side of Apollo, so let's do this. Like many Greek mythology tales, the story of Apollo starts with Zeus getting someone pregnant. And you'd think Zeus's wife Hera would have gotten used to that after the 973rd time, but the queen of the gods was mad mad. However, she remembered what happened the last time she came after Zeus directly. Her loving husband shackled her and had her hung from Mount Olympus until she promised to never defy him again. Like, just his way of showing love, you know? Putting these shackles on your Hera hurts me more than your betrayal. Yeah, you can string her up, tie her up, hang her, hang her, yeah, hang, hang her now. So now, Hera's thing was to punish the lady Zeus got pregnant. In this case, that pregnant lady was the deity Leto. So Hera devised a plan. Conveniently, Hera and Zeus's daughter Elithia was the goddess of childbirth. And Hera went up to her daughter and said, Listen, baby girl, your dad got another woman pregnant, so I'm gonna need you to bless that bitch with eternal pain. And her daughter Elithia did as commanded and ignored Leto's overdue birth. But Hera also had a backup plan, you know, just in case Elithia grows a conscience. Hera also told Zeus's grandmother, Gaia, the Earth personified, that Leto is not allowed to give birth anywhere on her, aka anywhere on land, or else grandma? Them earrings about to come off, yeah? Hera had everyone scared, so Leto was screwed, pregnant, overdue, wandering the lands, fighting Hera's curse for nine nights and nine days until Zeus intervened. First, he just told his daughter Elithia to cut the crap while she's grounded, and then he invoked the bro code from his brother Poseidon. Bro, I messed up, man. I got someone pregnant. Bro, again, man? Yeah, man. Was it consensual? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't even know why I was asking. Who cares? What do you need, bro? Zeus told his brother about Hera's deal with Gaia and asked Poseidon to make an island float with a stream of water and storms so that it was technically not attached to the earth. You see where he's going with this. It will be free of Hera's curse. So Poseidon made the island of Delos float and now Leto could finally give birth to her children, Artemis and her twin Apollo. From the moment he was born, Apollo was beloved by all the gods who all came to see the two new Newborns. Hephaestus gifted Apollo a magical bow, and Themis gave him some ambrosia and some nectar, which immediately made Apollo grown and strong. For reference, nectar is wine. She gave the newborn baby Apollo wine, alcohol. Of course, Hera wasn't really feeling like attending the baby shower, so she sent a monster instead. The snake-ish dragon monster Python ordered to kill Apollo, Artemis, and their mother. But remember, Apollo was on that drank like Popeye was on spinach. So with his insta strength and his new bow, Apollo chased Python down all the way to another island where he slayed it after a glorious battle. And this was the first time Apollo got a serious self-boner. Dude realized that, damn man, 
I love myself. I'm awesome. So to remember that and the fact that he slayed this powerful beast, Apollo decided that this very island where he first spilled blood deserves a temple in his honor. So Apollo built his own temple. And when it was done and he had no one to worship it, he kidnapped some random sailors by blowing their ship off course and then luring them onto the island in the form of a dolphin. On the island, they inevitably stumbled across the marvelous temple, which had Apollo is awesome written all over it. So they were like, hmm, maybe we should worship this Apollo guy. Seems like he's awesome. And because it was a dolphin that let them there, the island became known as Delphi, which over time became a famous place of worship for Apollo, who amongst many things was the god of prophecy. So Delphi became the site where an oracle tells prophecies to all visitors of Apollo's temple. This, you could say, was the beginning of Apollo's grandeur, and it just spiraled out of control from here. Apollo named himself the god of archery, god of prophecy, god of medicine, god of light, god of dancing, god of poetry, god of disease, god of truth, god of goddamn everything. And he enlisted his own groupies to praise and sing songs of worship about him to him, <laughs> the muses, singing about Apollo all damn day long, worshiping the guy and pleasuring him. I mean, it's ridiculous. Why can't I get me some of these muses? Like, is that like an escort thing? Or is that a membership? Like, ah, I'll pay up front. But just like his father, Apollo didn't just have a massive ego. He also had a serious dark side, fueled by his extreme pride. For example, once Apollo had a musical contest against the Saturos Marcias, who had the audacity to declare himself the greatest musician alive. So Apollo had to show the dude was what. The stakes for the contest were that the winner could do whatever he wanted to the loser. Apollo won the contest and decided that whatever he wanted to do was to flay the man alive for his hubris. So he peeled his skin off while enjoying the screams. You get me? Dark. But Apollo's darkness was also triggered whenever his love was refused. Something that led him to kill three women and one man, four innocent people, doomed the day Apollo fell in love with them. Apollo was bored by his muses. Sure, they worshipped him, but they constantly wanted him to play the lyre. So Apollo asked them, if I didn't play music, would you still love me? If I didn't smell so good, would you still hug me? Apollo wanted someone to love him for him, and he decided that that someone was Daphne, a beautiful nymph who he fell in love with the moment he saw her. Problem was, Daphne was a follower of Apollo's sister, Artemis, and Artemis was one of the forever virgins of Greek mythology and their followers were all about that life, meaning Daphne didn't do romance, but Apollo wanted to do Daphne, so he chased her while she ran away <laughs> screaming in fear. Uh, I feel like Apollo, that, bro, that's not, that's not how love works, I feel like you got that shit twisted. In her screams, Daphne pled to her father, the river god Peneus, to save her, to help her, and in response, Peneus transformed his daughter into a laurel tree. Which, <laughs> bro, you couldn't have turned her into like an MMA pro or given her wings or something, bro, a tree, really? So now Daphne was a laurel tree, and because Apollo was so oblivious to how he is the bad guy in this story, he declared his eternal love for the laurel tree and decided it was time to adopt a new title, God of laurel trees. From then on, the laurel was Apollo's symbol, while Apollo was quickly busy finding another woman to love him. Victim number two, Cassandra. Cassandra was a princess of Troy and a priestess of Apollo. And after the failure with Daphne, Apollo thought that making one of his priestesses fall in love with him should be easy money. And since Cassandra was the hottest one, he picked her. Of course, Apollo knew it was common courtesy to show up with a gift when you force someone to love you. So he was like, hey, Cassandra, is it? Yeah, I've been watching you. <laughs> not, not, not in a stalker type of way, just in a godly type of way, you know, keeping my eye on you. <laughs> uh, I kind of want you to fall in love with me. And if you do, I will give you the gift of prophecy. Yeah. Now, who would say no to being able to see the future? I mean, come on, we all dream of superpowers. So Cassandra took 
the gift but then rejected Apollo's love. So Apollo cursed Cassandra, decreeing that no one shall ever believe a word she says ever again. And now Cassandra could see the future, but any and all predictions she made, no one believed. I feel like that's a curse that's easily reversed by just saying the opposite of what's going to happen. Or am I, am I tripping? Like, come on. Why are, you, why are you turning your back on... That's rude, bro. Come on, turn around. They want to see you. Yeah, they, this is dog labor. I don't care. I'll do... You got to pay some... I pay all the bills around here. Listen, you feel me? You got to do something. I put food in your bowl. All I ask you is to look pretty on camera, bro. Dog, literally, dog. Please? Guys, I'm telling you, it's hard to find good labor these days. All he has to do is sit pretty like a model. He can't even do that. Come on, man. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. I love you. Much later, this curse would be the doom of Troy. Cassandra knew that the Trojan horse was a trick, but no one believed her, and so Troy fell. <laughs> Which is very ironic because Apollo fought for Troy during the Trojan War. Congratulations, you played yourself. So after these girls all refused Apollo, he was thinking, who needs a woman anyway? Anyone can sleep with a girl, but it takes a man to seduce. A man, you get me? So he shifted gears and fell in love with Iakintos, a beautiful man. And for once, Apollo got his wish. Iakintos fell in love with Apollo too, and they spent the time in bliss and it was everything Apollo wanted. A true love, mutual love, perfect. So it's really obvious that something has got to go wrong here. This is Greek mythology after all. That something going wrong was Zephyros, a god of wind, who was also in love with Iakintos. So one day, Apollo and Iakintos decided to play frisbee, which, make no mistake, was just uncool back then as it is now. The only thing that makes it a bit more hardcore back in the day was that instead of a frisbee, they used a discus, which was made of steel. You with me? I feel like you can see where this is going. Apollo threw the discus for Yakintos to catch, but the jealous Zephyros couldn't bear their happiness, so he used his command over the winds to accelerate the discus to smash right into Yakintos' face. And it literally smashed his face. Skull, brains, forget about it. Boy was dead, on the spot, dead, unrecognizable dead, like bringing the dental records dead, you get me? And all Apollo could do was cradle his dead lover in his arms and cry, with the only solace being the flowers that bloomed from Iakintos' blood, which are still known by his name, the Hyacinth Flowers. So Apollo shifted gears again. Uh, let's try another woman, you know, another princess. Coronis. Apollo went after Coronis and they fell in love, actually love, and before long Coronis was even pregnant. All seemed well, until Apollo saw Coronis sleep with another dude while she was pregnant with his child. <laughs> <laughs> I love this story. Apollo was furious, so he called his sister Artemis to kill the pregnant Coronis. Yeah, I know, you don't know if it's funny because he called his sister <laughs> or if it's sad because you know, they killed a pregnant woman. Apollo then burned the body but had the decency to cut out the sun before it was burned to a crisp. Which is now not some kind of good father born out of tragedy plot twist, nah. Apollo stayed true to his selfish ways and gave his child away to someone else to raise it. Uh, I swear Apollo is the biggest prick. It's hilarious. But Apollo actually gave a son to Hiron, who was partly raised by Apollo. It was Apollo who made Hiron the great trainer of heroes like Heracles and Achilles. So Apollo's son was now in the hands of Apollo's adopted son. Apollo's biological son was given the name Asclepius, and Hiron raised him up to be the greatest mind of medicine the world had ever seen. So great at medicine that Asclepius even managed to bring a human back from the dead. And then Asclepius was killed for that by Zeus. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, Apollo's whole story 
you can catch a breather. Bringing people back from the dead kind of went against the rules of the gods. It went against Zeus's rules, it went against Hades' rules, Ares hated it because he had a hard-on for people dying. Nobody's allowed to mess with the dead. So Zeus killed Apollo's son, Asclepius, as punishment. This is when other gods usually back off because nobody wants to mess with Zeus. We're talking about the self-proclaimed awesome Apollo here. To Apollo, the greatest god is Apollo. So I'm not sure if he then did what he did because killing a son was an offense to his greatness or because he actually cared about his son. But Apollo had the balls to exact his revenge against Zeus. He went after Zeus's beloved blacksmiths, the Cyclopses, who crafted Zeus' famous famous thunderbolts, one of which he used to kill Apollo's son. Zeus loved these Cyclopses, he freed them from hell himself and they were his trusted followers. So Apollo killed them all. Oh. Zeus was mad and punished Apollo by exiling him from Mount Olympus to work as a slave for years. But of course, Apollo would make his way back to Mount Olympus, he would recover only to suffer some more in other ways. Apollo didn't actually spend all day just being worshipped and playing music. He also had a job. He had to drive the sun around the sky, which depending on the source, this is kind of confusing because if you read one text, it's Helios driving the sun around the sky. If you read another, it's Apollo. But it's generally accepted that from the 3rd century BC onwards, Apollo drove the sun around the sky. More on that later in the extra notes, but we'll stick to Apollo for now. So he was driving the sun around the sky like a newspaper route every morning. In the world of the mortals, everybody knew Apollo was the sun and everybody worshipped him as such. In fact, Apollo could be argued to be one of the most worshipped gods in ancient Greece and ancient Rome. And like any other god with that many groupies, Apollo had a bunch of children with a bunch of mortal women. And one of them, Phaethon, admired his father like crazy and loved to brag about his godly father. And now some demigods do this and are admired for it, while others are looked at as losers who are just lying about their dad. The young Phaethon was the latter. Whenever he told his peers that his father was Apollo, the sun god, the great one, no one believed him. To them, Phaethon was just this nerd trying to be popular by lying about his father and really his mother is just another woman that was knocked up and abandoned by some idiot. Phaethon was pissed and determined to prove his bullies wrong. He told them he would ride his father's sun chariot and they would see him in the sky driving the sun. So he went to his father and guilt tripped him. He cried about how Apollo abandoned him, left his mom to raise him all alone, grew up to be bullied, blah 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 blah. All he wanted was a father, you know? So so feeling guilty and to calm his son down, Apollo said that Phaethon could ask for anything and Apollo promised that he would grant him one wish. <laughs> and so Phaethon asked to ride Apollo's chariot, drawn by four powerful stallions and Apollo knew that the young Phaethon stood no chance at controlling these wild stallions but as a god he can't go back on his promise, especially not the proud Apollo. So Apollo gave the boy a basic tutorial and told him that the horses ride this route every day so really you know just sit there don't touch the reins don't do anything you'll be fine don't touch the reins <laughs> you know what's gonna happen right the boy didn't listen phaeton took off in that chariot all proud and wanted to get closer to earth lower you know so that the boys can see him riding the sun chariot so he took the horses closer to earth but he took the sun way too low and it burned the earth scorching it forever then Phaeton panicked, yanked the reins up and the sun went way too high, causing the world to freeze over. And this is how we got the Sahara, the Arctic and the Antarctica. Man, I love these little facts, that's why I love mythology. Phaeton was completely out of control, as were the horses, they were panicking. So before the sun caused any more damage, Zeus shot Phaeton out of the sky and the boy fell to his death. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. It's just such a Zeus thing to do. Apollo's life is just 
From that day on, Apollo couldn't stand the sight of the chariot and its wild horses anymore and passed the duties of the sun on to the titan Helios forever. That's okay though, because Apollo was still the god of music, art, dance, archery, healing, disease, you remember, right? And if the whole how is he the god of disease and healing thing kind of confuses you because they're contradicting, well, the god who can kill you is also often the god you pray to not to kill you. So Apollo was prayed to for life and health because the ancient Greeks believed that whenever people were struck by sudden unexplained deaths or a whole town, women and children were wiped out with like the plague, it was an angry Apollo who rained arrows down from the sky, just like he did during the Trojan War where he supported Troy and rained thousands of arrows on the Greeks, something we now remember as the Greek army suffering from the plague. And speaking of the Trojan War, Apollo also had another important part to play here, actually several parts. He was the one who guided the arrow of Paris into the heel of Achilles. But I'm going off topic because, you know, the Trojan War, that's a video for another day. Time for the extra notes. As I mentioned, it's majorly confusing who the sun god actually is because there's a titan Hyperion who is the heavenly light and Hyperion is the father of Helios who is the sun. But then there is Apollo who is light. So that includes the sunlight and its warmth. Over the centuries, both Apollo and Helios were the sun god, but you could say that from the 3rd century BCE, it was mostly just Apollo. That's the short version to simplify this, but it's absolutely viable to say that Helios is the sun god and that Phaethon is the son of Helios and the whole story I just told you above remains the same, just swap out Apollo with Helios as the dad. The whole story of Daphne and Apollo also has a version where Cupid makes Apollo fall in love with Daphne with one of his arrows because arrogant Apollo said, Cupid is not a real archer, what even is this with your silly love arrows? The problem here is that Cupid is the Roman name for Eros, so this tale is a Roman tale, which is why I left Cupid out of the OG Greek mythology version that I just told you. And while we're on the topic of varying versions, remember the musical contest between Marcia and Apollo. Yeah, Marcias was a satyros, and notably Apollo also has a famous musical contest with another goat dude, the god Pan. Is that the same myth, just different versions? Could be interpreted that way, but Pan's version is a bit different and also features King Midas, and I'll probably cover that in its own video. Lastly, there are some things I left out even though they're really cool, but I feel like they hurt the flow. When Apollo discovers Coronis was cheating on him, it was a white bird that snitched and told Apollo. And Apollo then let his anger out on the messenger which turned the bird black, which is why we now have crows. I like that, it's pretty cool. There are also more stories of Apollo slaughtering innocent people, but I'll save these for my Artemis video because his sister was also involved in some of them and in general, Artemis and Apollo's tales overlap a lot. So Apollo will feature heavily in the Artemis video. And I also feel like I already gave enough proof of Apollo being evil, him slaughtering innocent children. That would just be the icing on the cake, but you'll see in my Artemis video. And another heavy omission in this video is Apollo's son Orpheus, who had a pretty epic adventure of his own, but the story of Orpheus and his wife Eurydice will also be a video of its own. And you probably already know, but I upload these videos twice a week. And if you enjoyed this one and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss out on my uploads and leave a comment. And maybe I'll see you here twice a week on all of my uploads, leaving comments, chatting with you in the comment section. That'll be nice. See you in the next one. Yeah. All right. All right.